Here's the old brake mounts. I pulled those off. You've got to take the hubs off, which requires uh, well, some kind of a slide hammer arrangement where I used a chain and a heavy jack to pull those off. Then you remove the brake back plate and bearing retainer. Then you put the hub back on and pull again to pull the bearing and the half shaft out. Quite a job. I was able to take the axle with just a diff in it to my friend's house where I changed the open diff you see here for a quaff diff. Mrs. Lawrence was horrified when I received this thing for a thousand pounds brand new from Quaif. And what a wicked bit of kit it is. I'll have a rant about that at the end. Here you can see a Quaif next to a Jag Powerlock plate type diff. Uh, obviously they're very similar, they fit the same axle. So the Powerlock comes out of a IRS axle, so it requires a little insert to be made. So I had Quaif make a similar insert. Here are my drawings, which I sent to Quaif. So they could make a similar insert to put in the middle of the ATB diff. So I did all the measurements, got the preload right on the bearings using Engineers Blue. I'm not sure I got a photo of that, but using Engineers Blue, we made sure that the um, pattern was correct. It was actually fairly easy just swapping the diff, not the ratio. Uh, all I had to do was measure the height of the entire assembly and measure the height of the mating face with the crown wheel, uh, ensure that it was the same with shims. And actually it went in first time and the meshing pattern was perfect. So that was that. Took it home and then got the half shafts in and you can see here I've got a feeler gauge. It is pinched at that point but if you hold the half shafts so they're perfectly central and not drooping then you can measure the backlash in there which is a specified number in the manual. That little piece between the two half shafts is what Quaif made and that sits in the middle of the ATB diff. Uh, similar to the item you get or you can get to put in a power lock diff and I had to adapt the bearing retainer plates you can see here in the lathe I've actually had to take material off there was no good just removing shims I had to remove some material to push the bearing further into the uh, the axle in order to get that preload between bearings correct here's the old piece from the open diff which has the half shafts pushing against it so there's twin opposing taper roller bearings on the outside of the axle and those push against each other and the the push if you like uh, the compression goes right through floating right through the center of the diff that was that fitted diff all done and the, the case can go on the back of it uh, all the caps tightened up and whatnot never to be seen again and then i'm onto the brakes i now realize my front braking effort was too strong so you can see on this chart i've done a case study of similarly powerful rear drive front engine cars and you can see i've got the, the weight balance of the car and the brake balance so you just take rotor diameter pad height uh, piston diameter front and rear and you can work out the um the balance the, the mechanical balance braking system front to rear so uh, not knowing exactly what it should be, I just modelled it on similar cars, basically. So I ended up with a very similar weight distribution, very near 50-50. And then with the Cosworth rear discs, vented discs and Cosworth uh, calipers on the back, it so happened that that worked very well with the Mondeo setup at the front with the uh, vented discs, 280mm vented discs at the front. The brake balance was then perfect. So these are the new brackets I made to uh, accommodate the Sierra Cosworth calipers. And here you can put it, I see I put the speedo uh, back in the back of the hub. There's a little bracket I made to mount the speedo uh, pickup and some consumables I got through, a load of stone chip brake lines and so on. So here it is, the final thing. And isn't she sweet? Look at that axle. Now it's a beam axle, so obviously it's terrible and could be a lot better. But it is a very strong Jaguar 4HA axle with a quaff automatic torque bias differential a fantastic bit of kit with a very uh, capable set of brakes hanging off either end the obviously massive achilles heel of this arrangement is with the wheels tires brakes and all of it it has a 150 kilo unsprung weight which is 25 percent of the rear uh, weight of the car so significant and that is right now the the very largest uh, issue with the handling of that car on smooth tarmac she's sweet as a nut but as soon as you go over some bumps, highlight the lack of chassis rigidity and all that unsprung weight at the back, and you begin to feel the limitations of the thing. And there it is going under. <laughs> so the thing with a Torsen diff, basically it has all the advantages of an open diff and all the advantages of a plate type limited slip diff. If you're driving the car gently, you don't know it's there. It's just like an open diff. And when you start giving it the beans, it does everything a plate type diff does, but without any of the moaning, groaning or clunking or unpredictability. It's very smooth. Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Can't beat it. Awesome bit of kit. So there it is now with painted calipers, new brakes, front and rear with good brake balance, spring rates all calculated. 
uh, with good suspension handling now and quite torsion differential in the back. I think, with the exception of a couple of little bits, it's engine time.